Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the fourth Sunday of Advent, which means that next Sunday we'll be celebrating the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And children will be waiting for Santa. And we have a presentation by our Sunday school today. Um, next, on December 24th, we will have our Christmas Eve candlelight service. We can celebrate that in person and online on Christmas Day. We will celebrate, there will not be an in-service, an in-person service. You can get that online. And we say happy Hanukkah to those who are celebrating that. Um, please take a moment to just look at the prayer list and being it's the end of the year and go through it and try to update it as well as you can. Um, before we begin, please bow your heads in prayer with me. Oh, infant Jesus, we ask prayers for the whole world this Christmas, and especially our own country, that we may see and know that peace comes not through violence, bitterness, and hatred, but through love, forgiveness, and reconciliation. Christmas is the time for love. As you chose the lowly, the outcast, and the poor to receive the greatest news the world has ever known, may we begin to see the world in the light of understanding. May we worship you in meekness. May we also remember our brothers and sisters, less fortunate, those who are suffering with illnesses, depression, May we take this moment to thank you for all you gave. Amen. The watchword for the week is, restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved from Psalm 80. Please stand for the call to worship. In a world torn asunder by violence, Jesus says, no more. As it is written, a new command I give, love one another as I have loved you. In a world where hurting people are too often neglected, Jesus says, no more. As it is written, a new command I give, love one another as I have loved you. In a world where another's needs are too overlooked, Jesus says, no more. As it is written, a new command I give, love one another as I have loved you. You may be seated and we invite the Ziegler family to come and light the fourth candle of love. Lighting of the fourth advent candle, the light of love. This morning, this morning we light four candles. In a world where darkness abounds, the light of the first candle radiates the hope of God's unfailing promise. As we light the second candle, we long for God's perfect peace to calm our souls and end our war. The third candle reminds us that no matter what happens to us in life, joy comes from God's work. As we light the fourth candle, we seek to share with others the love God has shown us through the gift of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, Scripture says, be loved because you first loved us. We confess that too often we fail to love others the way you love us. The Lord's eyes fix upon you. Help us to walk in the manner you love us. We pray this in your heavenly and holy name. Amen. Please stand for the next opening hymn. Our prayer to the morning star in the morning of the work at page 278. 
standing and turn to the liturgy for Advent. This is found on page 54, so turn to page 54. Sing to the Lord a new song, for God has done marvelous things. We will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and tell of God's deeds and songs of joy. Awake, awake, you people of God. Put on your festive garments. For God has already clothed us with the garments of salvation and has covered us with the robe of righteousness. The Holy One has delivered us and has become our salvation. Thank you. Thanks to you, eternal God, for the word in human form given to us in the child of Bethlehem. The word speaks to us in a way we cannot avoid. Therefore, let us put aside the masks of pretended righteousness and confess our sins to God. You may be seated. 
Gracious God, this Advent season stirs a longing to have Christ come alive within us. Yet we allow ourselves to become enslaved to cynicism, selfishness, and greed. In a season for freely giving and receiving, we tend to live by debt and obligation. We rush from task to death. There we opening our eyes to the peace and beauty around us. We glory in the visions of the old man Zechariah in the temple, which will fulfill his business by Elizabeth, but our ministry to the elderly in our midst world Lord. We sing of one who was laid in a bar of nature, but he adored the poor and monstrous among us. We decry the violence of a wicked king, yet we are too often silent in the face of abuse and injustice around us. For these and all our sins, forgive us, we pray, relations Comfort, comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to them and proclaim that they have suffered long enough, that their penalty is paid and their sins are forgiven. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all. Christ Jesus gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify a people of his own. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Christ, God incarnate, who lived among us as foretold by the prophets, who has, was descended from the royal line of David, and who was baptized in the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might. He does not judge by what his eyes see, nor decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he judges the poor and decides with equity for the meeting of the earth. We believe in the coming reign of God when justice will be established in the earth. How wonderful it is to see a messenger coming across the mountains who brings good news, the news of peace, pronounces salvation, who says, your God reigns. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord, which is the one which the spirit. the light of the world, empower us to shine as lights in this dark world of sin. 
Christ the creator of her, by whom all things were made. Lead us into good stewardship of the creation, that we and our children may preserve and enjoy the world entrusted to us. Christ the living truth, give us the spirit of wisdom and understanding that sees beyond temporal values to discern your truth and to declare it. Christ, our righteous judge, give us courage to stand by the poor, the meek, and the oppressed, and strengthen our support for all those. Christ, the Lamb of God, send us forth as your ambassadors of reconciliation in a broken and troubled world. Bring peace to the conflicts of nations, races, and tribes. We are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that we might proclaim the mighty acts of him, for the side of darkness and into his marvelous light. May our lives show forth that which we truly are. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please stand. May the Lord make us increase in love for one another and for all. May, May the Holy Spirit strengthen us to become more like Christ as we believe in the way this time. <laughs> The first reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 7, verses 10 through 16. Again, the Lord spoke to Hazah, Ahaz, ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Ahaz said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, hear now, you house of David, is it not enough to try the patience of men? Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. He will eat curds and honey when he knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right. But before the boy knows enough to reject the wrong, and choose the right, the land of the two kings you dread will be laid waste.
you invite the Sunday school children out? Plus, one week before Christmas, when all through this place, every child was stirring with a big happy face. The decorations were hung up through this church with care and hope that their parents all soon would appear. The children are gathered. With lines to be said, by visions of angels, Lord, in each hand. In one week, it would be Christmas. The time would soon be here. The sing of baby Jesus, the message so very clear. On, On Sunday, Sunday, before Christmas, Christmas the of the evening were high in the sky. That's and wondered what this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to son, and you will call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. His kingdom will never end. This angel's business was a very good thing. The Christmas story, so incredibly incredible. We love to hear it again and again. You know how it goes. About 2,000 years ago, a decree went out. A decree is like a law. All the world has to sign a form saying they were a true citizen of a certain area. Now granted, we are woman as many people back then, but that's still quite a job. 
This new law said you have to register where you were born. Joseph was okay about it, but poor Mary. She was expecting a baby any day now, and she had to make the trip too. All the way from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Only donkey, about 70 miles, not a good thing. Mary and Joseph finally made it to Bethlehem, so did thousands of others. There were people everywhere, no room in any inn. An angel in an in, in, in like in a hotel. In hotel. <coughs> well, what that really means is they couldn't find a place to stay. Not a good thing. Finally, an innkeeper, that's the person who runs the hotel. See how tired. Where he was, or what his stable. This stable had cows, hay, and probably the worst smell. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that stable, Mary has her firstborn son. An angel had already told Mary that the son's name would be Jesus. She left him in swaddling clothes. That's like long strips of clothes. And laid him in a manger. That was a beautiful job. Thank Very you. Nice. <clears throat> the second reading will be a responsive reading found in the bulletin. It's from Romans verses one through seven. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, the gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures regarding his son, who as to his human nature was a descendant of David, and who through the spirit of holiness was declared with the power to be the son of God by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him we receive grace and apostleship to call the Gentiles, obedience that comes from faith. And you also are among those who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Please turn to page 292 in your blue hymnals for Once in Royal David City. <laughs>
the reading of the word is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Matthew 1, chapter, chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was placed to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be child with a child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived of her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said through the prophet. The virgin will be with a child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. This is a beautiful morning. Everybody looks great, sharp, like they used to say in the old days. And if there's one thing that I really enjoy about children's ministry and children's uh, voice heard in the church, not only in music song, but also in preaching and teaching, uh, it's that it gives them an opportunity to flower and to blossom. And even psychologists have done studies on how a child that is raised in the church develops awesome leadership uh, skills, and also their emotional intelligences gets multiplied. So therefore, if you're bringing your child in, or you're thinking about bringing in a nephew, a niece, a grandchild, or whatever it is that a neighbor's kid, bring them to the church, and it's Great Kills Moravian Church. Don't forget the address. We also want to welcome those who are visiting us for the first time. I really appreciate that, and we really appreciate that at Great Kills Moravian Church, because this is a season of Advent. And we don't come to the house of the Lord just because it's Advent. We come to the house of the Lord because we want to see Jesus. We want to see Jesus. We want to uh, feel and we want to think and we want to believe and we want to live for him as he chooses us as his servants. Today's uh, uh, message is uh, found in the book of Matthew. And the title is simple. Joseph, a just man. Joseph a just man. What is a just man? What is a man that is uh, filled with justice, a uh, man filled with integrity? Uh, the Bible in the book of Psalms, Psalm 1, it's a psalm that I learned in Spanish when my grandmother used to visit from Puerto Rico and come to New York. And she taught us this psalm. And here I'm going to read it in English because if I say it in Spanish, you probably will not understand it, right? Right? But it's the first three verses that talks about what is a just man, what is a man of righteousness. It says, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of the sinners or sits in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields his fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does, prospers. What can we say about Joseph? What can we say about Joseph in this story? As you know, uh, the Bible uh, in the Gospels, Matthew and Luke, they have two stories about the annunciation of Jesus being born. The story of Luke is about the annunciation to Mary, about how the angel appears to Mary and tells Mary that she's going to have a child. In Matthew, we have an angel through a dream that reveals himself to Joseph to tell him that Mary's child is not his, but it belongs to the Holy Spirit. Each story of the Annunciation is different. They have different purposes. Luke is very elaborate, gives a lot of details. As a matter of fact, there's like a dialogue because in Luke's, 
uh, when Mary talks to the angel, she even questions, how is this going to be going out for me having a baby? I haven't known Joseph. I haven't been intimate with him. How is this going to be? So there's a dialogue. And even in the, in the, in the book of Luke, when you see the story that it develops uh, regarding Mary, Mary at one point in time jumps for joy and is like Mary Poppins and she sings a song. She's like, oh God, you have visited your servant. I am so glad you have done this, you have done that. He, she sings. How about Paul? How about Joseph now? How does he do? Does he jump for joy? Does he start singing all over the place? Practical man, right? <laughs> it's a trip. It's a trip. I mean, I, I was enjoying this, this whole this whole thing about how is it that we get a message from the Lord and one person jumps all over the place and another person is like, okay, so what are we going to do? <laughs> practical, practical. What are we going to do? Joseph is a carpenter. I was speaking to one of the brothers in the church. I, I love to speak with him because he's always, always talking about theology and hermeneutics and all these other stuff about the Bible. And um, Joseph is a carpenter, but a carpenter back then is not like the same type of carpenter over here that belongs to union. I don't know what number. Okay. It's not that type. The carpenters back then, they did a lot of stuff. There was like a combination of uh, engineer or architect. And also they worked not only with wood, but they also worked with stones, with metals. So he was a carpenter, and most likely his father was a carpenter, and his grandpa was a carpenter because that's how the way it was, you know? If you're, if you're a teacher, your mom is a teacher, maybe your grandpa is a teacher or your grandma. So it's one of those things, it's a tradition. So he's a carpenter. And he says, the descri his description on, in Matthew is, he's a just man. That is not taken to be taken lightly. You know what a just man is? It's a man that lives for righteousness. He has integrity. He likes to do things the right way, not just the way it feels like it. No, 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 no. He's a man with a pattern. I'm sure he studied the law. I'm sure he tried to obey God. And here this just man is about and has gotten a news, a tough news, a news that is very surprising. And not only that, he's going through a difficult situation because as he finds out that his, his engaged partner is, you know what? He's going to get going to a balloon stage. So he is very, very nervous. And he knows that he and Mary are in a tough spot, and especially Mary, because there was a tradition back then that during this stage, it, all of a sudden you become pregnant and nobody really knows who the child is. There was a law to stone her. So it says that Joseph didn't want to bring shame to her didn't want to bring shame to the family because everything that happens to an individual would affect the family, especially back then. And so he didn't want to bring that shame. So he was planning. He had a plan. He's a thinker. He had a plan. I'm going to leave her secretly. I'm going to leave her secretly. I'm going to abandon her so that she doesn't get the consequences of what could happen to her. That's Joseph's plan. He's a thinker. Thinkers think. They plan out stuff. We have to remember, some people are thinkers. Some people are feelers. They're into feeling. Of course, most of us are combination, right? But usually when you really think of yourself, you go like, I'm more of a thinker. I'm more of a thinker. I've even gotten some, some uh, psychologist test that told me you should not be a pastor. You think too much. You have to be more of a feeler to be a pastor. And there's these tests that are done even for, for pastors that are going to the ministry, whether males or females. So what happens is this. Joseph has a plan. He's thinking it out because that's why he feels that it's the best proposition for him, the best decision. 
He's thinking of something that's a little bit much more comfortable that I think he could deal with it. It's going to still be pressure. It's still going to be difficult. It's still going to be emotionally tangled up. But he decides, or he's thinking about abandoning. But you know, guess what? Just when a human being tries to out, outthink God, you think that you can outthink God? Just because you're planning it out. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go to Harvard. Oh, I'm going to do the MBA thing. Oh, I'm going to marry so-and-so from uh, uh, what zip zip code. Because I cannot deal with this other zip code. And people, all of us are like that. We're always thinking our stuff. But yet the Lord and the scripture shows us that no matter what your thoughts are, his thoughts are higher. The prophet says, Isaiah, my thoughts are higher. Your ways are your ways, but my ways are higher than that. So what does God do? He sends an angel. Most likely it's the same angel he sent to Mary. That angel was working overtime during those days. And he had to deal with Mary's responses. And now he had to deal with this guy, Joseph's responses, Joseph. So the Lord reveals himself and tells him, listen, uh-uh, take Mary home. Take her home. Marry her because the child she's going to have is from the Holy Spirit. Oh, and by the way, you got to put him a name. No child is going to come into this planet is not going to have a name. His name is Jesus, Greek, Yeshua in Hebrew, Aramaic. You're going to call him in English, Jesus. In Spanish, Jesus. Like my name. So he gets the call. He gets the instructions. And you know what? What does Matthew say in this chapter? He says, all of this stuff is going on because this was a prophecy to be fulfilled. You know, some people think that life is uh, just by accident. It's situations out there. No, 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 no. God does not play games. Even Einstein says, the old man does not play dice with the universe. That's Einstein from Princeton University. God has a plan. His plan is not Joseph's plan to abandon, to sneak out, to escape, to have Mary and not be uh, attacked and, and, and even given death. But that was not the plan. That was not God's plan. God's plan is for Joseph to obey him. It's for Joseph to put a name, name Jesus. And Matthew says that this is a prophecy to be fulfilled. Because the book of Isaiah, and was read today, chapter 7 of Isaiah, it says that a child shall be born. A child shall be born. And, and when that message was given in, in the times of Isaiah, about in eight centuries before that, that message was given that it was given to a king that was afraid, a king that was terrorized because there were these two nations who were going to attack Israel, who were going to attack Judah, and they were going to vanquish them. They were going to annihilate them. They were just going to do uh, horrible things to them. And through all that whole fear that the king was experiencing, the Lord tells him, there is going to be a child. It's going to be born. And believe me, the dread, those things that you dread, they're not going to happen. Was Joseph in a situation that he was dreading, that he was fearful? Yes, he was. He was afraid. The angel told him, don't fear. Fear not. He also, this angel also tells Mary, fear not. Don't be afraid. Because sometimes the things of God that we don't understand will give us fear, will cause anxiousness to us. What's going to happen? What's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to her? What's going to happen to our family? Is anybody thinking nowadays what's going to happen to you, to your family? There's fear. There's anxiety. But yet the Lord has told him, no, you're going to have a son and you will call him Jesus. And he's born of the Holy Spirit. He's going to be with you. And the prophecy is fulfilled. It says that when Joseph woke up, he became awoke. Now, nowadays, that's a bad word. Awoke. 
But this, this time, he's awakened to the dream of God. It's not an ideology. It's the dream of God. When you get the dream of God, he gives you awakening. He opens up your eyes. Open my eyes, Lord. I want to see Jesus. And he was promised that he was going to be the father. Some commentary called Joseph the foster father. Because he did not really bring his seed. It was the Holy Spirit that did the action. And Joseph gets the name. And he awakes. And he takes Mary to his home. And it says that he names the son Jesus. Son Jesus. No, Joseph is not the biblical character like Samson that I used to like. Mr. Tov, the Hercules of the Bible. No, Joseph is not like Moses parting the sea in, 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 two, in two separate corners. No, uh, Joseph is not like Elijah that would pray and it would not rain and pray and it would rain some more. No. Joseph is a regular guy with a common sense attitude, but with an integrity that was far none. No one had that type of integrity. You don't have to be a superhero. You just have to be faithful and obedient. And Joseph becomes the man at that point in time that he was thinking of leaving and yet the lord said no 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 you got to stay you got to stick around and this message is very important for those fathers that sometimes feel that it's very difficult to stop difficult the situation this week i had several confirmations about this sermon and one of the people that i met on the way was a person that was working uh for the play uh at gateway academy He's the sound person, the sound person. He's a he's 55 year old young man. And we were chit chatting. We just talked a little bit. And he said, oh, these few years have been really tough. And one of the tough things he had to go was that his wife has some kidney problem since she was a child because she was born with only one kidney. Her kidney went bad. And you know, folks, who gave her the kidney she needed? That husband. I'm sure that when he married her, he wasn't signing up for that stuff. That you're for you. God spoke to Joseph. God is speaking to you, the Josephs that are here. You could be a biological parent. You could be an adoptive parent. You could be a foster parent. You could be an uncle. But yet, there are certain situations that the Lord is telling us and telling you, hang in there, hang in there. The child is going to be Emmanuel. There's four things I want you to remember in this message. These are things that are notes for the heart. First of all, God speaks. There's a book by James I. Packer, very famous Anglican theologian that I got to meet in the 70s. And he wrote a book called God Has Spoken. And he shows how God can speak to us in different ways. General revelation, special revelation, through nature, through our conscience, through the scriptures, through our church traditions. God speaks because our church traditions are born from people that were searching God. That were searching after God, whether they were born, their, their mission was born in Europe or their mission was born in Africa or in the Caribbean. And God has spoken. God has spoken. What is the problem? We don't want to listen. God has spoken. He speaks to so many ways, sometimes even through our child. And God speaks in different ways. The apostle Peter said, God has spoken by men and even women and women, not even, and women touched by the spirit of God. And they've given a word. God speaks through many things. 
Some people think that God can speak only a.m. But you know what? Wake up and smell the coffee. God can speak a.m., f.m., in whatever, whatever way it is you want to do. Virtual, even virtual. I remember one time a cousin of mine, he passed away already at age 50. But a cousin of mine, he was a computer thing. Person, he was into the to, into this dark web stuff. He was into really heavy metal. Oh my God, drastic, whatever. And one time, the, all the lights went out in his place. All of them. And there was a, like a spirit of darkness that fell upon him. He called me up from Florida to Puerto Rico. Oh, I'm calling you because I know that in the family, you, you're a pastor. And in the family, you talk to God. And in the family, but I'm scared. This guy was like honky like this. And I said, you know what? God is calling you. God is calling you. God is sending you a message. God could do it verbally or non-verbally. God could do it through your context, your situation. God can do it through someone, someone else that you don't even know from a hole in the wall. Yet that person will tell you something that you need to know. And you know that the message is from God. It's a Federal Express for you. It's a UPS for you. It's a fax from the heavens for you. Because God doesn't want us to live a life afraid and scared about making decisions, about staying the course. So God can speak through us, maybe through a dream. The other day I saw an NFL interview on ESPN and a football player was being interviewed, I think from the Ravens, not my team, of course. Uh, and he was being interviewed and he had a big injury, a serious injury. And one of the reporters said, well, how do, you, how do you think you were able to make it so quickly? You know what he said? God talked to me. God talked to me and said, I'm going to be all right for this game over here. This is a football player that makes millions of dollars. And yet he forgot that they're going to be making fun of him because he said God talks to him. Because usually the, the way we look at it is like we talk to God. So you know what? You can talk to God all you want. This is prayer. But God talks to you. God talks to you. And no one can tell you, oh, no, God did not say. Of course, God is going to tell you, jump off the bridge. Come on. That ain't God. But God can speak to us through our dreams, through visions, through the scriptures. He speaks to us through the scriptures, through the service. God speaks to us. Through the Lord's Supper, God speaks to us. Not only that, God speaks to us in our crisis. God is an expert in our crisis. When we hit a crisis, I'm 65 now. And one of the things I've learned in seminary was like, try to uh, do an outline of your life every five years. And, and, and when you do this every five years, what things have really made a big momentous decision, maybe a trauma or something, a point in, in your life that all of a sudden you turned around. And in those groups of five years, it's like there, it's like there almost every five years, something will happen that Jesus La Guerra has to change direction. Sometimes even start over, start over from scratch. No apartment. Not even a bed. But you know what? God is in our crisis. God is a God in our crisis. When we become a widow, when we become divorced, when our kids go away and they don't want to return, and you can put all the candles in the window, they just don't want, they just want to spread their wings. And you experience that emptiness syndrome. But you know what? There's an ego out there. It's called God. And he's going to watch over your children. He's going to watch over your grandchildren. Because a fourth point I want to make is that God is Emmanuel, Jesus. God with us in the ups, in the downs, during the storms, during the calms, during the bitter, during the sweet, during the dark, during the light, in the desert, or in the abundance. God is with us. He is with us like when Daniel and his friends 
were in a furnace. They were burning, apparently. But yet even the king went out and looked and said, wait a minute, didn't I put three guys here? Now I see a fourth guy. Who is it? Who is with you? Believe me. Believe me. When you serve the Lord, somebody's going to come to you and say to you, wait a minute, Frank. How is it? I don't know if there's a Frank here. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know, but there's something about you. Or I don't know. Everybody was looking for that position, and they gave it to you. You just came in. You're not from Union XE, XE 95, 79. You're not from that. Because they forget. God is with you. Finally, when you look at the story of Joseph, you have to look at a little, a little prayer which we sing that says, have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. And what, what, what's the other lyrics? Because I have it here in the little computer. It says, Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yield it and still. May the Lord have his own way in our lives. As we pray for the peoples, we know that so many people in the whole world, they're experiencing different crises. But yet in each situation, God is going to be with them. And God is with us. Lord, we thank you for having the sovereign presence, your loving presence, your comforting presence, your presence that brings us peace in the time of despair of helplessness or hopelessness. We ask, Lord, that you will touch the hearts of our family members, that those who are ill, those who are sick, those who are about to make a job change, those who are about to change in their relationships within their family system, may you guide them. May you strengthen them. May you bring them wisdom. Lord, look at all the rulers of the world no matter what they call themselves. They could call themselves presidents. They could call themselves prime ministers. They could call themselves ambassadors. They could call themselves chancellors. They could call themselves whatever it is. We just know that you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I pray, Lord, that your spirit of wisdom will touch their hearts. And no matter how hard their hearts become, just like a Pharaoh's heart, may you always make a way for your people to worship you. May you always make a way for your people to serve you. May you always make a way for the people that live in darkness to see the light. And it's in Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen.
we prepare our hearts to offer the offerings and our tithes to the Lord. Let all mortal flesh keep silence and with fear and trembling stand. Ponder nothing earthly minded for with blessing in his hand, Christ our God to earth descended, our full homage to demand. All of us, loving God, you have given us life with such many possibilities that we can never do enough to express our gratitude. Your promise of Emmanuel, which means God is with us, is a sign of your salvation is here. You named your son Jesus, which means he saves. Righteous God, you have given us the gift of grace and peace, which we could never repay you. We offer ourselves in our Thanksgiving to share. Pray that the resources will accomplish good among us and far beyond our expectations. Use us as apostles of your grace. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Closing him, come our long expected Jesus. <laughs> the benediction. Thank you, Lord, <clears throat> God, Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. Thank you for this season of Advent. Help us understand that sometimes our richness does not uh, equal to how many gifts we have in, around our Christmas tree, because we understand that you died on a tree for us to give us life, and that you were born to be our Emmanuel, to be with us. May you be with our people, the community of faith at Great Hills Moravian and all the great Moravian churches all over the world and all the churches that confess your name, whether it be whatever continent. And it's in Jesus' name, our Savior, we pray these things. Amen. Amen.